the public just won't let Mary Pickford grow up. Mary changed her type to suit the critics, but the public clamored for their old sweetheart, and the answer is Little Annie Rooney. By James R. Quirk. Photoplay. September 1925. Two months ago, Mary Pickford asked the public, through Photoplay magazine, to assist her in determining on the type of picture she shall make in the future. She had made Dorothy Vernon and Rosita as well as any living actress could do them. The critics raved, but the public sulked. 20,000 letters have been received by Mary since her appeal for suggestions appeared in these pages. We want our Mary back, was the song they sang. And Mary is singing back to them with Little Annie Rooney, which I believe is her greatest picture. It has more laughs than the gold rush and more tears than over the hill. Mary Pickford has just passed through a crisis in her career. After years of unwavering triumph and child roles, she heard the inevitable cry of critics urging her to change her type, to put up her curls and play women. The public had not tired of her youthful characterizations. The critics still praised them highly in review. But it appeared that a time had come for a change. Mary regarded the matter as critical, for there is no one less sure of self, no one more open to criticism and advice than Mary. Deciding at last to act on the suggestion, she engaged the best directors available, Ernst Lubitsch to direct her in Rosita, and Marshall Nealon for Dorothy Vernon of Haddon Hall. No labor or expense was spared in the matter of production. The result? Two notable pictures in which Mary gave performances equaled by few actresses. Her ability was proved both as an actress and a producer. The pictures were heralded among the best of the year. But somehow, the appeal fell short, far short, of that which Mary had previously exerted. Mary regarded them as failures, and saw in them her own failure. They missed. Some element was lacking. Did the public want to return to the old form of characterization, or was the fault in her interpretation of the new? Distracted and unhappy, Mary at length directed an appeal through Photoplay magazine asking the public to decide. I know the magazine is read by 2,500,000 people every month, she wrote, and that these constitute the essence of picture patronage. So I'm taking this direct route to ask for suggestions as to the type of stories I should do. The appeal for advice brought 20,000 letters from a public representing every continent. The mailmen cried for help, and Mary's secretarial force was doubled. There was no doubt left as to the will of the majority. 99% of the letters beseeched her to be Mary Pickford, to return to the lovable character of youth which she has rendered classic. Mary was overwhelmed with pleasure by the response. It was the greatest testimony of the love the world holds for her that she has ever received. Postcards, words childishly scrawled on toilet paper, letters written on monogrammed notepaper and typewritten on business stationery, they poured in upon her as a tribute of esteem such as few world figures have ever commanded. They made a new woman of Mary, says Doug. Wavering in decision, fearful lest the public was tiring of her, the letters came as an exhilarating tonic to her courage. With enthusiasm, she threw herself decisively into making the best picture of her career. Little Annie Rooney. Never has Mary Pickford played so skillfully upon the heart. When she showed it privately in Hollywood, people declared it funnier than Chaplin's The Gold Rush. But it is not just comedy. It is a creation of exquisite shading, from delicate trembling pathos to sheer hilarious delight. It has the exuberance of youth, and the soul of it, this little Annie Rooney, as great, if not greater, than Tess of the Storm Country and Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm. Perhaps the art of Mary Pickford has been enriched with new experiences and new endeavor. The radiance has always been hers, and in it lies the secret of Mary Pickford's undying charm. Mary is more than an actress. She's a symbol. And through the child which she plays, the quality of her shines clearest. One of the letters she received expresses the world attitude toward Mary Pickford. Most everybody in the world is lonely, it said. It is hard to find friends, and there are many disappointments. But we all go on hoping to find our ideal somewhere, and so that's the reason we come to you, as you are on the screen a beautiful, wonderfully happy child who can make us smile and cry a little just as we used to do as children. Don't ever take that little child away. It would be taking more than entertainment, 
for we have made her ours, to romp in our hearts forever. For years, there has been speculation as to when Mary will retire with her screen immortality and fortune. Mary has no thought of retiring. Her work is almost as necessary to her life as food and air. She is never so happy as when she is hard at it, working on the continuity of her story, deep in production, or the final task of editing and titling. When one picture is completed and on its way to the laboratories for printing, when the ordinary person would take a long vacation free from all worries, Mary's worries begin. She becomes nervous, impatient to be at it again, always with a vision of a better picture, always eager to wrestle with new problems. The only time I ever saw her tired or bored looking was the day after she had approved the final working print on little Annie Rooney. You are going to take a rest now? I asked. Rest, she said. I'm getting disgusted with loafing already. Do you know a good story? 